Welcome back to the show and welcome to this edition of our book club entitled The Social Chapter. Today we're discussing a brilliantly original and funny book entitled Big Swiss by Jen Began. Uh, Jess, give us a synopsis of the novel. You bet. This is a story about Greta who spends her days in Hudson, New York transcribing therapy sessions for a sex coach who calls himself Om. So Greta becomes infatuated with Ohm's latest client, a sexually repressed married woman who Greta nicknames Big Swiss. One day, Greta recognizes Big Swiss' voice at the dog park and introduces herself with a fake name. They quickly become enmeshed, and any guilt Greta feels about hiding her real identity is overridden by her attraction to Big Swiss. She'll do anything to sustain this relationship. The book has already been picked up by HBO for a limited series adaptation, and Killing Eve star Jody Comer is set to star in it as Flavia, AKA Big Swiss. There you have it. There you go. Wow. <laughs> Great casting. Oh. Uh this book has themes of fluidity in sexuality, unconventional relationships, female pleasure, and of course, sex. There's a lot to unpack. What, what did you think about those kinds of themes in the book? Lots of sex. <laughs> yeah. Lots of sex. I, I didn't know going into it that I was about to dive into that. And then I was like, oh, wow, and I'd be reading it on the subway, and I was like, do you know that Simon? Looking around going, this is hot. You just remind, Simon caught me reading it at, at home and I don't know what was happening with my face. I wasn't doing anything, but he's like, are you reading a sexy book? I was like, oh, what are you talking? What are they doing? But he, he knew. But you know what? I didn't even think about, like, it was interesting because it's a relationship between two women and I, I, didn't even occur to me Same. while I was reading the book. Same. Mm -hmm. Do you know what not I mean? Not at all. Yeah. It wasn't like, it like wasn't... I, well, the way that they write the jacket cover, you're not clear about what the gender is of the person that she starts listening to in these sex therapy sessions. And so when it becomes clear that it is a woman that she's falling in love with, and again, Greta identifies not necessarily as gay. She sleeps with men. She's sort of, she's fluid in yeah. her sexuality. Yeah. And I think that Big Swiss has just, she's married, so it's complicated. She's married to a man. Mm -hmm. And so this affair starts, but it had definitely a lot of, um, points for discussion around the way that we construct relationships and about passion and about pleasure and about first times having orgasms. So yeah. It was, it was yeah. really interesting. I, yeah. I also liked, I mean, you know, one of the things I liked about it is that while it, there was sexiness, there was also like, grossness. Yes. Yeah. Because sex isn't always pretty. It can be pretty grody. Yeah. yeah. And funny. And, and messy. And funny. Yeah. And messy. I have not heard that word since 1998. <laughs> I've not Cody. heard that word. Okay, so I am curious to hear what all of you uh, thought of the book. So we are now going to give this book a rating out of 100 using our literature meter. The lit meter. We're going to start with our audience, in fact. So you at home, uh, as a whole, you gave this book an average of 76 out of 100. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty That's solid. It's a B, B plus. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Now I'm curious to see what we all thought of the book out of 100. So each of us will have 20 seconds to discuss our rating. Sin, what did you rate this book? I gave this book, what did I give it? An 86 out of 100, and oh. here's why. Initially, I found this book hard to get into, but once I did, I found myself LOLing and low-key turned on. The <laughs> writing was sharp and unique, but also kind of meandering and frantic, kind of like being in the head of someone who can't focus on a single thought. I will say I didn't find any of the characters relatable or authentic. They felt more like caricatures. Ultimately, I wouldn't want to be in any kind of relationship with either of them, but it was fun to be a voyeur. Ooh, nice. Ooh, nice. I like that. All right, lovely. Well, I gave this book a 73 out of 100, and here's why. It is a very fresh take on a same-sex love affair that begins in such a scandalous way. It was very, very, very sexy. And I'm embarrassed to admit it. This may have been the very first novel that I've read in a long time, maybe ever, of two women falling head over heels for one another. Another refreshing point, women refusing to accept their life circumstances as victims, but rather as experiences of empowerment. Love it. That was excellent. Okay, so I give this an 85 out of 100, and here's why. Because even though it felt a little clunky out of the gate, it picked up steam, and not just steam of the sexy sort. I enjoyed the imperfect primary characters, how the secondary characters felt fully formed, and the book's exploration of class, and how complicated trauma can be, specifically the perils of letting it define us, and the harm caused when we ignore it. Plus, there are miniature donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Minute to donkeys. Yeah. Um, okay, so I gave this book a 45 out of 100. I found this book pretentious and boring and desperate to become an HBO show. So congratulations, <laughs> mission accomplished. 
However, <laughs> books, lots of books are pretentious and boring. That wasn't my biggest problem with this book. My biggest problem with this book was its casual racism, anti-Asian racism. There are more than several instances where characters disparage Asian culture and Asian communities. And frankly, casual or otherwise racism isn't sexy. Clearly, the author doesn't think people from my culture is sexy. So, sex with racism, it hurts. This person wouldn't want to have sex with me, so I don't want to have sex with this book. It's done for me. I'm actually sorry I read it. Wow. Sorry, and if you need examples, I'll just, I'll just read you a couple uh, from a character who says, um, and I've switched out a word because I can't say it on television. It happened the other day, though, and I'm trying to remember the occasion. Oh, yeah, he said my... Uh, female, female sex parts smelled like an aquarium supply store in Chinatown. Oh, oh yeah, another. Uh, never mind, I know you can't answer that. I think she had PMS. Also, I said her female parts smelled a tiny bit like fish sauce, and she completely flipped out. Fish sauce, by the way, is a common ingredient in many Asian cuisines, so. And then here's one, just for fun. The bees seem Japanese-y. There's something kamikaze about the way they're crashing into things. Um, so when you combine all the other instances of describing the smell of a woman and relating it to Asian food, Asian places, Asian spaces, and then go off about bees seeing Japanesey and you layer all that together, mm -hmm. there is, for me anyway, um, an overriding sense of anti, casual anti-Asian racism that is so offensive, I do not know why it had a place in this book, especially since it's not addressed. Mm -hmm. It's not like a character flaw that they want to engage with. <laughs> Racist characters can exist in literature, yep. but you have to make a reason for it to mm -hmm. exist. And the author does none of that. Well, you know so. what I have to say? Yeah. Like, thank you. Because we were talking about this this morning and none of us noticed any of this. So mm -hmm. thank you for illuminating this. It's amazing that it still got through what presumably were editors and a whole bunch of people. So this, it's great to hear this and think mm -hmm. differently. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lainey. Thank, thank you. you for sharing that. Absolutely. It's time to reveal our next social chapter uh, book selection voted by you, our viewers at home. And it is, as you can see, because I'm holding it up right now, I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. Guys, this looks like an incredible book. Everyone's talking about it. It's supposed to be amazing. So we hope that you will read along. On that note, oh yeah. And so we do want you to read along at home with us. Engage on social media using the hashtag uh, 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 the social chapter. Good news for our studio audience too. You are all going home with your very own copy of the book. Today. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.